And the fact is that, you know, all these other folks should be considering why they're still in the race. They're not taking on the front runner. They should be asking themselves, what's their path to beating Donald Trump? Or is the path they're trying to beat either to Donald Trump's cabinet um, or to the 2028 race? Say what you will about former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, but at least he is willing to say out loud what the rest of us are thinking. That at this point, the Republican primary for president isn't so much about beating Donald Trump as it is about bizarre, over-the-top one-upmanship, all in the pursuit of a silver medal. Case in point, last night's debate. Christie aside, Ron DeSantis, Nikki Haley, and Vivek Ramaswamy appeared to be engaged in a political version of the game Operation getting as close to substantive criticisms of Trump without touching the sides, without having to offend him or his MAGA base. Their strategies appeared to be similar, find an area where Donald Trump wasn't radical enough and pump the volume up to 11. For Ramaswamy, it was the conspiracy, stuff like January 6th was an inside job, the racist great replacement theory is real, and that even the 2016 presidential election was stolen from Trump even though he won that one. For Haley, it was culture wars. For her, Florida's Don't Say Gay Bill banning instruction on sexual orientation and gender identity in certain grades wasn't homophobic enough, suggesting she'd extend it further. And for DeSantis, it was that Donald Trump didn't go as far as he should have on firings like Anthony Fauci, FBI Director Christopher Wray, on building the wall, on deporting immigrants. The Iowa caucuses, remember, they are a month from next Friday. Then we'll get a real idea of where these candidates stand. Let's bring in former Democratic Congressman Donna Edwards. Charlie and Frank are still with us. Charlie, first of all, like, what did you take away from last night? What, what do you think of this field after watching that performance? Well, I'm glad that Chris Christie is still in the race because he is the only person um, who is willing to say the things that he is saying. He's the only one pointing out how manifestly unfit Donald Trump is. Um, and, and he's the only one who's actually running against Donald Trump. I think your clip is, is you know, it was very, very appropriate. If, if the other candidates are running for president of the United States, they need to go through Donald Trump. And at some point, you need to run against somebody who is the who is so dominant in the polls. They're not willing to do that. Um, so I, I thought his performance was the most interesting. Vivek did make himself, once again, the most obnoxious person in America. The only role that he was really playing was to try to just throw up as much uh, you know BS as possible to distract all the other candidates. But it is interesting that the implicit message Message you got from both Ron DeSantis and Nikki Haley was that there is no longer any centrist or moderate Republican base they need yep. to appeal to. Everything is about hitting the hot button issues, checking the boxes of the most extreme elements of the party, as if unless you win them, there's no path. And by the way, mathematically, that may be true. But if you do not appeal to swing voters, if you do not appeal to moderate voters, if you do not appeal to normie voters, and you are unwilling to take on Donald Trump, why exactly are you in this race? And so that was a great question that Chris Christie asked. I, I agree. And, and Donna, you know, they were not willing, aside, Christie aside, to prosecute the case against Donald Trump. No, no big surprise there. There were some minor cracks. There was a, a line from Mickey Haley about, you know, this Trump economy that everyone says was so great. And then she talked about... Um, about the national debt during Trump's time in office. There was some question from DeSantis about whether or not um, Trump's age is a factor here, not his acuity, which I think would have been more interesting to go after, but his age itself kept talking about father time. No one can deny father mm -hmm. time. And yet the truth is that they were not willing to go for the jugular on what actually defines his fitness or lack thereof for the presidency. Well, I absolutely agree. I mean, I think uh, what happened is that the little bit of critique that you get um, from Nikki Haley and from Ron DeSantis is so milquetoast that it doesn't really go at the things that really make a prospective Trump presidency the most outrageous, his attacks on democracy, um, his um, his misogyny, his homophobia, uh, what he's doing on the, would do on the, on the border. And those are things that these Republican candidates, save Chris Christie, will not even touch. I mean, you describe them as going for a silver medal. Well, a silver implies that you really want to win and get the gold. I think it's more like a participation trophy. I think that <laughs> they're just showing up, and it's not really clear to me 
that they're showing up because they want to win the race, because they're not doing anything that will at all take down Donald Trump. His numbers remain high. He remains popular in the Republican Party. And they uh, have decided that they're going to continue to run to the right, which would never even enable them, if they were to win the nomination, uh, to win over that important middle in the country. Their views are so far afield from where the American public are. Frank, there, there were so many bizarre moments during the debate itself, but there was a what I thought was a bizarre moment that happened after Megyn Kelly was doing this sort of post-show analysis with Nikki Haley, and they had an exchange that I want to get your thoughts on. If you look at the fact that they're teaching gender pronoun, that they're making our military men and women take gender pronoun classes, That's you absurd. wouldn't be surprised. But we did look at the Army survey that said only 5% say it's wokeness, the reason they're not joining. They say, and kind of amazingly, because I know you're a military family, the number one reason they're not joining is fear of death. And the second one is a fear of post-traumatic stress disorder, like stress. They're, they're, they're afraid of stress. And the third is they don't want to miss their friends and family, which, I mean, I just think, like, as a military, like, where are the old grizzled military the, people? The patriots, like, right? The people. My husband joined after 9-11. It was that love of country. It's that sacrifice. I, I'm glad that your face mm. was the same as mine. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, here we are with more attacks on our institutions, mm -hmm. this time the military, and this portrayal that the military of the United States of America is somehow not as tough as it needs to be. It's the finest fighting force on the planet, certainly the best equipped, and proven successful under battle conditions. So if part of running for office these days means attacking the military, attacking the FBI, attacking the DOJ, and then competing on a debate stage about who is more hate-filled toward trans Americans and gay Americans, or who has the craziest conspiracy theory about January 6th, then we can cast aside any hope that somehow the temperature would be dialed down for the next administration. Right. I mean, that, that is exactly right, Charlie, which is Donald Trump may not have been in the room, but Trumpism was splashed across that stage. The meanness with which they spoke to one another, the ideas, the idea that you had Ron DeSantis on stage saying, you know, my actual problem with Donald Trump is that I don't think he went far enough on his authoritarian tendencies. It tells you that it doesn't matter who wins, there will be Trumpism in the DNA of this party. Yeah, this is not exactly breaking news, but once again, we had an illustration of just how fundamentally and thoroughly uh, Donald Trump has transformed the Republican Party. I mean, yesterday was was really bizarre. I, I started the morning by sitting down with Liz Cheney, um, the daughter of Dick Cheney, who is warning about the threat that Donald Trump poses, the way in which he might have used the military to overthrow the election. And that's in the morning. And then the evening you watch um, this debate of Republican candidates who in the first 15 minutes did not even mention Donald Trump, you know, with the exception of Chris Christie, do not, do not even talk about what Donald Trump attempted to do after the 2020 election and what he might do after the 2024 election, whether he wins or loses in terms of authoritarianism, the abuse of our institutions, or the fomenting of political violence. So here you have the same day that Liz Cheney, whose Republican credentials go back for decades, is sounding this alarm of the existential threat that Donald Trump and the Republican Party face. And then you get that clown show at the end of the day. Um, you know, what a gap between what the Republican Party used to be and what it is today. And you really had that on display. 